Hey guys, welcome back. Restoration on this Zenith 808 kicks off. Here are a couple photos that I shared before. One thing that's noteworthy, you can see the speaker wire's been spliced. That is, the wire's going to the field coil and the output transformer. No biggie for now. What I want to do is go ahead and prepare this chassis and get it out of the cabinet. You can see here that someone used painter's tape and they identified the lines there going back up to the field coil and the output transformer. Here I am just tagging that information with some numbers, numeric numbers, where I can have a good reference to get everything back the way it was. Next I remove the knobs from the control stems, followed by the four bolts that actually holds the chassis to the cabinet, followed by the dial pointer, and then you can see as well as the dial plate. You know, after a look at the chassis, I really want to do this one right. There is some rust, not very, very bad, so I will do some spot removal. But that tuning condenser is going to have to come out, and probably the power transformer as well. So here's a quick look underneath the chassis. You can see how clean this thing is. It's in great condition. Just a few more angle shots here, and some close-ups of some of the components. I would like to know, somebody's restored some Zeniths from around this same period of time. If you think the components here are original for the period... Uh, you will notice the electrolytics are still on top, have not been bypassed underneath. So maybe that's a sign that the majority of these capacitors are the uh, original for the period. Any thoughts on that, please let me know. Okay, let's take another quick look here at the top of the chassis. I'm going to get these tubes removed here so I can go ahead and get that tuning condenser out as well as the power transformer. So again, you can see all the rust there on the old goat tube shields, which I'll have to take care of. A lot of rust on that tuning condenser. The power transformer, one side of it's definitely rusted up. And then taking a look at the chassis itself, I can see a few spots there that's got some rust. Here you can see the old grommets that hold the tuning condenser in bad shape. We'll have to get those swapped out as well. One thing that I really, really appreciate about this radio if you take a close look, you'll notice a lot of the part numbers are still visible on the antenna coils as well as the IF transformers and the uh, capacitors here. Really totally amazing. And I actually found the part number there on the transformer as well when I was doing the de-rusting. So I'll do my best to preserve that. I probably won't use any chrome polish or anything. I'll just do some light cleaning on those particular items so we can preserve you know that part of history on the back of the radio you can see the old name plate here with the serial number the old power cord that I'll have to replace one thing that's really really cool AM station engineer if you're watching give me some information here about this underwriters laboratories re-examination I'd like to know more about that. Does that mean this radio went back through the Zenith labs at some point in time and it met those UL conditions later in life? Here I am just doing a quick check on the transformer, which I'll definitely double check it when I get it out of the chassis as well. But it checked good. Went through all the windings and uh, everything looks normal. The old tuning condensers have uh, seen better days, so again, aside from the rust, those grommets that hold it in place are in really, really bad shape. Here's like a little picture-in-picture picture that I did of some video here just to show how much movement there is in the uh, tuning condenser thing. Uh, you can see how much it moves around. It's just really, really crazy. So all the hardware is tight. Again, it's just the grommets or the spacers. Uh, they are just completely wore out. So I'll stick some new ones in there, rig something up here to give that some better support. Aside from the electrical challenges on these radios, I love the mechanical aspects of the radio. You can see here that the tuning itself is actually accomplished by rotating a 4-inch diameter piece of plastic that attaches itself to a lower shaft. Now this thing's really, really warped, which I've got some video again here with a picture-in-picture, picture, but you can see again how it actually works. 
So I'm going to try to clean that up, see if I can apply some heat to that, get it back in shape. If not, I'll actually just reproduce that particular piece. With the tuning condenser removed now from the chassis, it really frees up a nice work area to get in here and do the spot removal, the rust that I mentioned earlier. Let's take one more look here at the tuning condenser. Again, you can see all the rust on the hardware and on the frame. Again, I'm actually prepping the tuning condenser here for a bath and a vapa rust for probably a day or two. See if we can't cut through some of that. Again, I've removed the mica here and the screws uh, for the adjustments there for the tuning condenser and we'll replace those and get those cleaned up. Here you can see I've got the tuning condenser soaking and again the temps are just a little bit low so I'll probably let that sit for uh, probably a day or two or even longer. The next thing I did again was get this old power transformer out. I had already checked it it looks good. Again, I'll double check it, but here you can see I am taking time just to go ahead and tag my lines, followed by the schematic itself, and also a hand drawing of every connection point. That's always important in my mind. The old power transformer came right out, no issues at all. Again, there were four small screws and nuts holding it to the chassis. Again, here's a couple more photos, and you can see the extent of the rust that I had mentioned. One side of the transformer is in really, really bad shape. Uh, here's kind of a close-up. You can look here at my nomenclature that I use for uh, tagging the lines that matches my hand drawing as well. And it also ties back to the schematic. So here you can see I'm just getting the transformer uh, prepped. I'll use uh, some rust removal on it. Get it cleaned back up and then prepare it to be painted. Again, after completing the rust removal, you can see me applying a coat of paint. I actually applied, I think it was two coats of uh, paint. And I may go back tomorrow and hit it one more time. Need to flip it over and actually hit the, uh, the base itself as well before I throw it back into the chassis. Earlier I had mentioned that the two electrolytic cans are still on the chassis, which I find very cool. So here what I'm doing is actually just prepping the two electrolytics and one being a dual for removal from the chassis so I can restuff them. I cut all the wires right at the solder points, which I'll redo, and I got everything labeled, tagged. I've got hand drawings as well as I matched everything up to the schematic just to make sure no earlier repairs had been done that were improper. Everything matched to the T. Here you can see the chassis again. Now I've got a really, really nice area to get in here and cut through some of this grime using some antibacterial wipes followed by some rust removal. A few more photos here that better shows the chassis itself now. And you can see the rust that I talked about. Again, more just spots of rust. Some of them are kind of heavy in a couple locations. I'll treat those and then again use antibacterial wipes starting out, get this chassis cleaned up, and then apply the rust removal. I won't bore you with that process, but here are just a few photos after the fact, and you can see I've got about 90% of the chassis de-rusted and cleaned up. Looks a heck of a lot better, and I'll probably, uh, I'm not going to paint the chassis, I'll just leave the rust inhibitor on this particular chassis. And like I stated in the other video, if I'm doing videos in a couple years or so, I'll produce a, another video, we'll see how well it holds up over time. So that's all I have for now. I'll go ahead and continue the rest of the rust removal and get the grime and dirt and crud off the chassis itself. Get that power transformer remounted after it sets up and dries. Get the tuning condenser remounted as well with the new grommets. Then we'll take a look at everything and then we'll start right on the electrolytic capacitors. Get those restuffed and then start with the remaining part of the electrical restoration. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks again for my new subscribers out there.